In today's video, I'm taking you start to finish on how to complete this wonderful book from one of Ann Venture's Paper Minis kits. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy these kits are to put together. Alright, so for our first video of the new year, uh, and Happy New Year to everyone, I decided to do one of the kits that I showed you that Anne had sent me so kindly a while back. And a lot of you requested seeing the books, and I want to see this book, so that's the first one I'm going to do. This is a children's object book, and it's circa 1880. Um, it's a it looks like a beautiful book. So, we're gonna, I'm going to show you the parts, and then we are going to get started. So we have the cover for the book. This will be the bound cover. We have a dust, dust jacket. We have, I think this must be the case for it. I'm not sure. We'll find out. And we've got the cover that we need to size for the book. And then these are pages. So the first thing we are going to do get this nice and flat. Now this is printed, so you're going to have to be very careful when you cut and when you score. And I think I am going to score before I cut. I simply find it easier. So, there's lines. Today I'm using a double pointed knitting needle. I couldn't find my dental pick when I went to look for it. So I'm going to very carefully line my clear ruler up and I'm going to make a score line. It's a very faint line. Now there's little arrows where the two pieces come together and you can see the mark in the paper where it's printed. It's printed with a little line. And I'm going to go through and I will be scoring every one of these little lines. So when I get that done, I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Alright, those are all scored and it only took me about three or four minutes. Now I'm going to very carefully with a very sharp craft knife cut out right at the edges of those pages and be really careful on this step. Take your time, line your ruler up. I'm only going to cut a small amount on camera because I want my head right here when I'm doing most of this. But I'll show you the first cut. I'm going to follow that line. Now when you're cutting, be sure to leave. There's a little tab right here and here. We right here and here. Put that under camera. Be sure to leave that little tab because we will need those to connect this to this and this to this. So I'm going to cut these pages out and then I'll be back. All right, now I've got these all cut. They're scored. And take your time with that cutting process. It really, it will determine how your book looks. Now it might be a little confusing in that it looks like we have pages that are different sizes. That's because these are fold out pages. So just fold on the lines where Anne has shown you. And we're going to make an accordion fold of these books. We're folding right at that score line. The score line makes it so much easier. And make sure all your lines, all your edges line up and everything folds up beautifully. And you can tell which are your end pieces because they have the end pages for them. This is my middle section. So this is going to go here, so this is going to go up like this. And because I scored, it, it just folds, almost folds itself. Be sure you score straight and be sure you cut straight. Um, as long as you take your time and are careful, this is really not a difficult, making books is not a difficult process. They're actually a lot of fun. Again, fold over that little piece that's made to join. Double check my edges. Everything looks good. So I can let that go over here. And I can fold my last piece. And be sure that when you fold this, that you're folding these so that they can go into the to the back side of the cover. Oh, 
there's a little extra piece of paper. And that first couple of pages can be a little confusing because it's short and then it's long. Once we get this all put together, it will make a lot more sense. All right. Now, and I don't know if I mentioned, Anne has a whole page of directions. I've read through the directions. I don't do mine exactly the way she does, but that's because I've put together a lot of these kits over the years, and I've kind of developed my own method for some of the steps. Both ways are good. Neither is right or wrong. It's just we approach it a little differently, and that's fine. All right, now I'm going to very carefully, I like to join these together next. I'm going to very carefully glue that. I'm using a glue stick. And a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper on my table. I'm going to put glue on, let's see, where am I going? Here it is. All right, so this is the piece that goes together. Double check. We've got everything right side up. Yep. All right. And glue stick is nice because it doesn't take very long to dry. And this you can tell when it's dry because the purple color goes away. Now line those pages up really carefully. And I'm going to clamp it. This part I'm going to clamp with a clothespin. I just want to make sure it stays together while I'm getting everything glued together. I'm trying to put this where you guys can see, but then I can't see as well. And it's okay if your glue goes over the edge, as long as you glue where it goes, as long as you glue everything together. It's okay to get a little glue here. That's going to dry and you won't even notice it. And get another clothespin. I prefer plastic clothespins because they don't stick for this step. All right. Now, in preparation for the next step, I've actually cut a bunch of strips of wax paper. This is one that Anne doesn't do in her directions. I just had problems not using wax paper in mine, so I always do. So I have those on hand. I'm going to allow this to dry a few minutes, and then I'll be back. All right, now this is set for about 20 minutes. I'm going to back you guys up just a tiny bit. I'm going to take these clamps off. This is pretty much dry. We're going to double check our folding. Yep, it still looks really good. That's where scoring really helps. Now, we are going to start gluing our pages. We are not going to put any glue on these end papers yet. These need to stay clean. I'm going to work on a scratch paper so I don't get glue all over my surface, and I'm keeping these here. And I'll show you that in just a moment, and I'll explain when I do them why. Go up to that fold. And I like to do a couple of pages, and then fold. Now, you pre-folded, so it should fold okay for you. Be really careful that you are folding straight, that your accordion folds are nice and straight. This glue doesn't stay wet for a super long time, but you can tell because of the purple color. And you've got a little bit of playtime. See how I kind of squiggled it around there to get it straight? Now, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this part yet. I don't want to yet. Again, do that. Because these are so wide, I'm only really only getting glue on one, the back and front of each page at a time. Double checking between every couple of pages that you're remaining nice and flat. That will determine how your book looks when it's finished. And I probably wouldn't be working on this any faster if I wasn't recording. Sometimes I work a lot slower on the camera so you guys can see, but this is a process that you do have to take it easy. You have to be careful. Don't worry if it sticks to your paper. 
You want to be really careful with this. Ah! Things are falling apart. All right, yeah, we're still straight. Now we've got this little shorter page. I need the glue out just a tiny bit. Now do not fold those end papers in because you want those to be loose. Remember they're going to glue into your cover. Now this wax paper that I had you cut. I do this because I've had problems a few times where I've done this, I've gotten a little dab of glue on a page and then I'm stuck. I've got my pages glued together and then I either end up tearing my page or they're just permanently stuck. So if I put a piece of wax, a little strip of wax paper, wax paper's thin, it's inexpensive, it's in your kitchen. Make sure that when you're doing this that you're not pulling your pages crooked, that you're still all lined up. I'm trying to stay where you guys can see. See how this page wants to stick together. And also, even if you don't get glue on it, sometimes just the moisture from the glue can make these pages want to stick. And I cut a lot of strips so that I can put them with my stuff. That way, next time I make a book, I don't have to cut more. Because I've got another couple of books in these pages that Ann gave me. Oops, I was trying to fold the wrong way. All right, now. Double check, it's a little harder to see that everything's straight with the wax paper, but you can still do it. Now I'm going to clamp. You can either use a binder clamp, or what I like to use, eh, I think I'm going to use a binder clamp. Those are not going to work this time. And I'm going to use two. I buy these binder clips at the Dollar Tree. You get several for a dollar. They come in all different sizes. Now I'm going to put a cap on my glue stick so I don't forget. And I'm going to get this glue out. This is Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Glue. This is a liquid glue that stays a little tacky after it dries. So be careful where you use it. But what we're going to do, now this is, it's hard to tell, but the open side of the pages is on this end. This is the side that will be towards the spine. And double check that. You've got your end papers. Whoops, I didn't get a wax paper there and it's trying to stick. Check that your end paper is there. This is the side we want to glue. Did I do that on that side too? I did, and you can already see the moisture from that glue is trying to stick those down. All right, I've got this all lined up the way I want it. I'm going to clamp it because you want this to be nice and tight. I like to clamp from both sides. Some people clamp from one side. Now we're going to put a bead of glue. If you're using a regular tacky glue, you let's see, I'm going to go. I'm going to glue. I'm going to clamp this from the other way after I get this glue on. If you're using a regular tacky glue, I'm going to start this on my paper. This is almost empty. You might want to brush this on with a brush, like Ann says. But for this, it's got such a small nozzle that it's really good for places like this. Coat that entire spine area. This is what's going to hold your book together. Don't get it on the flat pages, on the end caps, end pages, and don't get it up on the open pages. I'm going to take a third clamp and I'm actually going to clamp that. Now this needs to dry, so I'm going to set this aside to dry. Now we're going to work on our cover. As soon as I figure out where I stuck the cover, there it is. We've got a cover piece and we've got the cover, what she calls the interfacing. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find my ruler. We're going to very carefully score on the little lines that are on here. And this is really hard to see without my head right over it. And the paper is glossy, so it's a little hard to keep my ruler straight. Yep, that's scored in the right place. 
So I'm going to score all these lines. You're going to go across the top. Oops. My ruler is squiggling all over the place. One nice thing about using this to score, it doesn't make a sh it doesn't cut into the to the printing as much. So if you make a mistake, you can correct it a little easier than with the dental pick. All right, now I'm going to I like to crease before I on this I'm going to crease before I cut it. Just cuz I think it's easier. All right, that needs to be a little further down. Got that a little too high. It is better to go too high than too low on that, though. All right, now that's all done. That's done. That's done. All right, now I'm going to cut this out. I'm just going to use a small pair of scissors for this. I'm not going to use my ruler because there's not much to cut. I like these little tiny scissors for working in small detail areas. And these were not expensive scissors. I think I bought them at Walmart, and I, they were, I know they were under $10. I want to say they were under 5 it's actually my second pair. I lost the first pair. But I love these scissors. I like the shape of the, um, the blade. It's nice and thin and long so you can get into spots. And don't worry if you leave a little bit of white showing at the edges. None of that will show when you get done. Right. Now I'm going to cut this up. For this, I'm actually going to use the longer scissors. There's no detail here. It's just a matter of cutting on the lines. Now, we need to double check that this is going to fit. Make sure that this is going to fold down over and you're not going to have the interfacing sticking out anywhere. Yes, it's going to fit very nicely. So, let's put this over here. this inside with glue stick. I'm going to put this in. And you got to work quickly on this because this paper is more porous and it sticks down quite quickly. That interfacing area part is made of like a cardstock, and it's a little more porous of a paper. All right. Now we're going to take some more clamps. Let's see. I want to put some pieces. I'm going to put uh, wax paper first. All right. Sorry about that. My memory card got full. So what I did is I backed this with a piece of just scrap cardstock, kind of wrapped it in the wax paper, and then clamped it. So the reason I did that, let me get this clamped again because the glue is not dry yet. The cardstock prevents, well the clamps are on so that those edges glue down, obviously really tight. That's what we need. The cardstock prevents these clamps from making marks on my cover. And the wax paper, again, is to keep this from sticking should there be any errant glue on the outside of this. So this now needs to dry. When this and this are dry, we'll come back, we'll put this together, and we'll have a book.
All right, so the glue is not completely dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the cover because I'm gonna run out of light if I don't. The glue, well, it's, it's almost dry. So we're gonna unclamp everything. These all in the jar rather than all over my table. Take that little sandwich apart. Now I want to score this. And you're going to use these, you know, these will tell you where to score. It's going to be a little hard. I may actually score this with the, I think I'm going to score this with the back of my knife blade. Now I'm using the back side. This is the cutting side. This, this, this is the, this is the cutting side. Find the camera. And this is the side I'm going to score with. Because I don't want to cut, I just want to score. And I'm lining up the edge of the ruler. Okay, come on, without getting crooked. It's not liking this. All right, now we're gonna bend this so that it will bend on the book. All right, now we have our hardcover, we have our book. We're going to make sure that we are right side up because trust me, I have put books together upside down in the past, okay. That's the top. This is the front. All right. I'm going to use this. Oh, no, I want my glue stick. I gotta reach my glue stick. I'm working on like five projects on my table at one time. I'm actually filming two videos and making, making birthday cards all at one time. So now I'm going to take this glue. This is the same glue that we used before. And I'm gonna put it in the spine area. I'm going to let that sit for a few seconds while I put glue stick. And I'm going to put my wax paper back in here. I'm going to put glue stick. Remember the wax paper is there to protect that page so we won't get glue all over it. Making sure, yep, this is the front. We put the glue, trust me, I've done this wrong before and that is not fun, that is heartbreaking. When you go to all the work to make a book and you put the cover on upside down. You, it's really, really not a fun day then. And I'm just kind of lining this up. Oops, I want that to stick. I'm sticking to everything. And you'll have to fiddle a little, and I'm sorry if you can't see this part, but I've got to get where I can see it, because I've got one shot at that. Now we need to stick that book all the way back into the cover. And I'm going to put this back on it, and I'm going to get... Actually, instead of using that clamp, I'm going to use this clamp. And I'm going to clamp this from the open side of the book. And that needs to dry. So that's all I can do until that glue dries. All right, so this is dried overnight. I ran out of light last night. So unclamp it. And you still have to be careful. Whoops, I didn't get a. I forgot to get the wax paper in that page, hopefully. Okay, this is what happens when you don't get wax paper. It came apart though. All right. So let's get all these wax paper sheets out. And I don't think I'm gonna make the sleeve for this book. I don't, I don't really want to do that right now and I don't really feel like I want, I will use it. So we have our book. So now these pages need to fold idea according to what I read on Anne's little bit about the book was that this book has all these fold out pages which is pretty dang cool not sure which way they're supposed to fold not fold mm, let's 
fold them like this. Fold some of them one way and some the other. You can move them back and forth. Oops, one more. Oops, come on. All right. So there, now your dolls have this beautiful book for their library. And that's how easy it is to make books, especially using Anne's kits. They're wonderfully done. The print quality is wonderful. The paper is wonderful. And they're just, they're just so much fun to have. You could age this book if you wanted to to make it look like an antique, which I might in the future do, or maybe on the next set of books. Maybe I think the other package with books was uh, up here. Oh, we've got the dust cover. I will quickly show you how to do the dust cover before I go. So for this, we're just going to... I don't always do the dust covers for these, but I will show you. Just very carefully cut it out. And I like to actually do it this folded on the book. That way I can get everything centered. And you can choose to glue the dust cover on permanently or, or leave it off or just have it so it comes on and off. It is up to you. It is your book. A lot of times if I am going to do this, so I will just, usually I just leave it like this. So. We have a book with a dust cover, and it's a gorgeous book. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I encourage you to visit Anne's website. The link will be in the blog post. And look at all the wonderful kits for books and other things that she has on her site. If you haven't subscribed to her newsletter, be sure and do that. She puts out a weekly newsletter where she shows you her new projects, some newsy items, and she, used, she always has a list of free complimentary projects. So if you haven't tried printables, that's a be the best place to start. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe, check out the Facebook, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.